Hello everyone again. It's Scott and Rita. And um, we've got a little uptick in our, our um, subscribers. I'm really happy. Oh. Not that it matters, but um, we're happy with whomever is here. So it's Scott and Rita with another Cosmic Dialogue. And we wanted to talk about something in the future, of course, about when we arrived at our first destination. Tell us a little more, Maria. What are we talking about? Okay. Um, we really had the intention of being in a place created by us, claiming our future. We, we took hold of the right again to have the ability to plan and create our own future which at one time had been stolen from us or was attempting to be stolen from us and we did not participate in that we just decided to um go a different way and so at our first destination, this is where we want to start our dialogue today. And um, we arrived with about 10 people. And when we started, we weren't sure who those 10 people were going to be. We had a few ideas, but we were open to those not necessarily being the, um, the, the whole group of explorers because we wanted to create a little community of people, however big it wanted to be, but there had to be certain criteria met. So why don't you talk about what we wanted to create with our group of explorers into all the unknown of what our future could be and to discover what all the possibilities and what we might choose. So yeah. in order to come along, not that we, not that we um, rejected anyone, but they had to want where we were going. Yeah, I really think that too, it's, we talked about this a long time ago and um, it's in our dialogue number 43. And if you look on YouTube, but we talked about the, the 10, you know, after a dream I had had of, of 10 of us doing cosmic dialogue together, but actually these 10 of us explorers are now kind of our work is actually just birthing future moments and that is our work that's our daily work that's our vision that's what we do and um, whether we meet weekly or monthly or however we can meet people know that that's the time where we actually are birthing and opening doors to future universes and people take it seriously as such. So um, the people that came to us, the people that we found, because there was a combination, were highly self-responsible. They were highly, um, I don't wanna say necessarily highly or lowly creative, that they were just innately creative just as they know that they were created to be creative so there was an essence some of um just understanding and knowing that even an average person of the human race can do something like this and that this is what what this is about there was no no false pretense even though we all kind of understood that there was a, a god-given grandiosity that we could actually feel when we came together, whether that was virtual, whether that was in person. And um, 
Yeah, it was. But that criteria was just making sure that everyone was really open and on board and believing and positive and holding these positive visions for a future and not allowing any longer this external world to attempt to pull a rug out underneath and to lay it to delay or steal these potential futures that we were opening up that we were actually showing exploring already and so Rita you and I have always like know that we've kind of like been two years ahead of folks and so the um the group now is it only took like one or two sessions for the group to be one or two years ahead of everyone and now we're kind of like we're in the realm of like 10 20 years in advance we really do open up the whole window for what's coming next which is so exciting to see it's um it took a few sessions we, you know we have to get beyond our little little issues of like a, a skin and bones and things like that but we were able to actually cross you have made this statement of we crossed the the rocky mountains we were able to cross the rocky mountains of our journeys and our explorations together in just about two sessions and then then the lid was off it was amazing and it continues to be what else are you seeing rita well the um i'll add another criteria which was really important was just unabashed curiosity and that coupled with faith just kind of led us every time and so if anybody was not on board with that it just was going to fall flat and they would you know if if we took it someplace that just you know rubbed them the wrong way or just challenged their curiosity or faith too much they would voluntarily just understand, well, this isn't for me. And so those things happened and that was fine um, because we knew that that opened up a space for someone who really wanted to explore every possible thing there is to explore. And paradoxically, you said that we got um, 10 to 20 years ahead. And yet we also, started seeing evidence of what we were saying almost immediately. So we had both things going on because we were working or feeling and seeing and understanding 10 to 20 years ahead, we could make or allow things to happen right away. And it was really not about making, it was about opening up that space of faith so big that God or the universe would just say, oh, there, here, here you go. So what would have just taken maybe 10 or 20 years of, of planning and plotting through and making things happen just turned into ease now with this and especially multiplied by 10 that just catapulted us forward in ways that we couldn't have predicted i made this little joke one time it's like well of course we'd see results right away we're already 20 years ahead and so we get ready for the the, the evidence that'll drop at our feet. If we are 20 years ahead, we're going to see 20 years ahead of time evidence. So um, we almost had, there were some times where we had the, um, the sense of real group telepathy. That was an amazing first journey exploration amongst ourselves, even over virtually, even if we did something virtually over time just seeing people's faces in a virtual call actually 
for some people we heard quite a bit of like chatter and we could even address i'm sensing a lot of mental chatter or we could address here's something i'm hearing more than one of us say or perceive or or think or or feel and that was really amazing but i think also we we realized too that when we went ahead 20 years we did this in a very authentic faithful way in partnership with god those third hands this of source whatever name it's called that we went in in tandem with that relationship intact and so the 10th person or the first person actually was always god source um and so Whereas in the alternate world that many folks live in, there is kind of technology the same way. That was kind of, that was probably produced artificially. And we've learned how to catch up with that by partnering with God, by partnering with each other, by really opening up all of our senses to actually be there you know, the 20 years in advance that that other realm claims to be in um, technologically, we're there um, from a more natural human evolutionary standpoint when we when we get into these groups and we do this. So that that was one discovery we, we made pretty earlier on, or it was just a, a big jolt and it felt like a huge upgrade for all of the group. And we we're like, whoa, this is what's happened, especially the evidence. Like I, I joked the first time, it's like, of course you're seeing evidence. You're 20 years in the future. You're gonna see evidence right away because that evidence came from 20 years in the future because wherever you walk is 20 years in the future. So um, we had moments like that where we had to like just reinforce each other to like understand the, and be happy about that that evidence to, to be giddy and, and awesome, but not to disbelieve it, to say, of course. Um, because I think sometimes we, in the older paradigm, we found ourselves not believing it right away and finding ways to explain it away. Oh my gosh, I can't believe that. But no, we believe it. But it's, um, it's still f fascinatingly childlike discovery that goes in with it. So, but at the same time, it's like, well, of course, of course that happened. So... Um, yeah, that's kind of a side note, but some things we're discovering. Then I like how you um, did mention people just going away if it was just wasn't for them or if they felt it got a little too far for them. So that, that happened and it did make room. And even sometimes like when, when a person would do that, we would still feel them sort of lingering on you know, like they were still practicing with us anyway. So we had to realize too that while we were also in the future, some we had someone come back and we kind of knew they were going to come back because we'd already kind of been in that space and, and we wished them all the love in the world and they came back to us after they had a journey themselves that, um, that they needed to have in order to do this work. And we were really grateful. But for some, it was just not what they were called to do at the time. And it was fine. So I think with faith, you never really waver. You understand that you've got like a, a major mission to do. Yeah. Well, it was interesting because we discovered fairly quickly that really what was going on was not so much of like knowing the future or learning new human technologies, <clears throat> but really it was being so willing to be seen by God, by ourselves and by other people 
fully seen and to feel what that is actually like. Sometimes people had to go away and feel th through and have their own journey of, of being uncomfortable with that and crying through whatever injuries that brought up, whatever triggered that triggered in them and then come back in order to continue being seen because we couldn't learn more of our own abilities if we were not going to let ourselves be seen. That was a really important key. And back then people were kind of um, skeptical, said, well, Scott and Rita, what exactly are you talking about? What do you mean be seen and learn new human technologies? And in some regards, it's very difficult to explain, but just like having telepathic communication, you can't if you're not willing to be known and seen if you're going to curate the words that come out of your mouth, if they're different from what's really inside of you, then there's no chance of telepathy because you're gonna block anybody knowing what's truly inside of you. And so when we started, we had no idea besides telepathy, we had, you know, possibilities like by location, that sounded cool, or teleporting, or um, things like that, so that we could know things and truly trust that we knew them, even though our discovery of them went against everything that we were told was possible. So there were multiple things going on in these explorations, very personal, as well as things that could impact all of humanity. And I think that was like, for those folks who were, or even for us, those folks who were a little bit on the fence, um, there was you know, the first time you actually channel or remote view something where you actually see a truth about the world that maybe is scary is dark and if you haven't prepared yourself for that yet then you're going to be scared and, and all of us go through that we all go through that you're going to be scared you're going to be upset you're going to have these things well up in you um I think the 10 of us now realize that whenever we, we hit those boundaries and we see those, those real dark possibilities and the dark realities that we are also there for each other to actually process and to actually feel and feel through. And then we can actually just see these things objectively and know that we are seeing something accurate. We are seeing something truthful and we can still allow ourselves to be seen through that instead of cowering and hiding. And because sometimes when people know that they have secret knowledge or knowledge that is conspiratorial or not allowed or, or not in the norm, they, they tend to hide. They get anxiety, no one will love me. They find out I know this, what's gonna to happen to me? So um, we were also a good support for one another to actually just recognize that we saw truths. And that feeling and those feelings was just a part of that journey into being seen and to keeping ourselves, as we call it, like illuminated, I guess throughout those things. So um, darkness didn't happen very much, but when it did, that was how it was addressed. So um, 
there's responsibility that comes with exploring yeah and and revealing what you find so self-responsibility as far as our own reactions and what we do with it but also accepting the responsibility of knowing things that maybe aren't in the collective awareness and knowing how to behave um, if those things aren't accepted yeah and still having full um what's the word full knowing that we have had real experiences and that, that we can we can plan accordingly and also like what really helped a lot of us is that we knew that god saw us as we were and it really took time or and you wrote this in your book so long ago about um not necessarily most of us didn't even have to like you know throw out all of our anxieties and anguish and and ills and perils and you know supposed addictions or addictive thoughts or whatever out to the world for them to be responsible for it we worked through that in advance so that we knew that God saw us at all times. And so if God sees me in my terrifiedness, at least I know I have that. And I don't necessarily have to like always just make that the responsibility of the group. But if I do need support from a group, um, yeah, it's, it was, this whole journey is like a real interesting journey of like tearing down all of, all of those walls of that other dimension that's out there that um and most people when they step into this they've done a lot of that work but having god see us at all times really helps us and knowing that our self-responsibility is first between us and knowing that god sees us and having that self-responsibility means that we don't have to dig into all of the aspects of our self in order to explain a feeling of being terrified or scared or upset onto other people as their responsibility. Does that make sense? I understand what you mean. I don't know if others will or not, but um, <clears throat> yeah, it's, we don't need to have other people carry it for us. Yeah, it's, and, it's and it's, pick up, pick it's there up. regardless. Oh, I'm sorry. People can pick up your book and read about that. So, <laughs> but it was pretty much required, you know. That, that's. And if it could be distilled down what we're doing, this exploration, what we have discovered is that we are just learning to see as God sees. And that's kind of the ultimate goal. Because when you try to align your feelings and your vision with God, it takes you to a much bigger vantage point, much higher vantage point. So even those um, places where we were uncomfortable or afraid, we could quickly see the benefits of this perhaps temporarily negative thing happening um, or dark darkness being exposed we could see the effect outwards as, as being very positive and also allowing people to choose whatever they choose yeah god is like the most amazing giddy childlike artist <laughs> and if we also approached our practice the same way then we knew that that we were onto something bigger mm -hmm. so um that was the key once we realized that you know 
realize. I don't know if I want to realize. Once we came to the conclusion um, that God was a generous artist. Many of us did that long, long ago. Then it, we realized that the, the, the identification of evil, unless it was really visceral and really shared, kind of was our own opinion. So, but not, not to disparage that there are, there is light and darkness, but um, we learned right away that well, this is just a brush stroke of darker paint right now in a larger canvas. Or is this really, so we had to learn to confront that. I won't get into the, I never illuminate the dark. So, um, mm. but there's no point. It's like you said, feeding a black hole. <laughs> what? <laughs> um, you know, we've been fueled for far too long. Why would we feed that? Mm. So we were made to be fuel and livestock in that other dimension. We are made in God's image as creators in this one mm -hmm. and explorers. Yeah. Deep explorers. So, and we're keeping going. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Infinity and beyond. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> <sighs> and it feels good because, you know, we, we learned just that we weren't participating in that other um, dimension. We don't have to talk about it. We don't have to like acknowledge the issues going on. And that was just that one little thing was extraordinary discovery. Yeah. We, we don't have to participate in this. Yeah, we walk on the earth, but this is not ours. Sorry. See ya. This realm is not our home. Mm -hmm. so you can have it. We have to walk on it for other purposes just because we are flesh and, um, you know, we have to go get groceries and eat food and do things to support the vessel for our spirit. But our real home is not this created. Yes. Melodrama. <laughs> <laughs> That's our next cosmic dialogue. What's that? That's our next cosmic dialogue. The um, walking around on the earth as a tourist. Oh. Yeah. I feel like a tourist mm -hmm. a lot of times. Yeah. Perhaps. There's no Google Translate for whatever is going on. <laughs> That's for sure. <laughs> I don't understand. <laughs> ah. Anything else you want to add, Rita? I think that's good. All right. Normally I don't do plugging, but I, I'm just getting used to it. So um, it really would help, you know, if you do like this video, press like, subscribe to us. Um, I don't do a lot of self-promotion, but so yeah. why not? We'll do it. So um, hit the little bell to be notified when we do a video and come along with us. So what have you got to lose? So, or don't, it's okay too. So anyway, have a great day, everybody. Bye-bye. <laughs>